In the workshop, a check valve with a difference. I've never seen one like this before. It's one of two that are fitted to my traction engine, and they're fitted with a tap, which means you can turn them off. If you get a problem with your balls, and the valve starts to blow back and dribble, you can turn them off, because if for any reason the check valve blows back, this can be a very bad thing, because it would soon empty the boiler of its water. The stainless steel shaft with the squared top sticking out of the top of the check valve is actually the tap. This check valve leaks, not the valve itself, it's leaking where it's mounted to the boiler. I've had a few problems like this with this traction engine, because it's a copper boiler, and the studs that hold things like the cylinder, the motion bracket, etc., and these check valves, are made from phosphor bronze, and with the constant contraction and expansion of the boiler, after a while, you just need to tighten the nuts slightly. The nuts on this check valve were particularly slack. Hardly surprising, though, because this check valve takes the water from the crankshaft-driven pump and allows it to be fed into the boiler. And as this is cold water from the bunker tank that's been fed straight into the boiler, this check valve is constantly expanding and contracting. As you can see, there's a substantial gasket fitted, so all I really needed to do was just tighten the nuts holding the check valve to the boiler. When the engine was in steam, there was a constant frying noise coming from this side. That's because the oil from the motion was running down onto the check valve and the leaking steam was making it sizzle. When I made these motion guards, I wanted them to be removable easily and quickly. And in no time at all, here is the check valve on the bench. I'm going to dismantle it to have a look inside it. First of all, I undid this large nut. This is a gland nut to stop any leaks from the valve. It's packed with graphited yarn, and this graphited yarn's been in there a long time because it's quite hard. Apart from the tap, inside the other chamber of the valve is a large bronze ball. One problem I had with this valve was I didn't know which way was on and which way was off, and when I first got the traction engine, the valves were set only halfway open. This could be a problem knowing whether the valve is open or shut, so I'm making a mark using a centre drill. The valve itself is a taper plug type valve, and the shaft of it is thoroughly packed with graphited yarn. This is some new graphited yarn, or should I rephrase that, it's some new, very old stock graphited yarn, like it used to be. I don't like the modern stuff very much, it doesn't seem to be the same. This image shows the principle. I wound the yarn tightly around the shaft of the valve and refitted it in the hole. It's the pressure from the gland nut pressing down on this graphited yarn that holds the taper plug tap in position. Before I refitted the gland nut, I also fitted a silicone o-ring. I do like a belt and braces approach. The next part of the job was to tighten the gland nut in position, but not too tight. This is the underside of the check valve, and as you can see, it's actually machined to the same diameter as the boiler. I thought I'd take this opportunity with some very fine wet to dry sandpaper, just to clean it up a bit. Then I continued the sanding with the wet to dry sandpaper, to key the paint for another coat, because it's looking a bit worse for wear. As I showed earlier on in the video, it looks like there's a gasket already fitted, but just in case it doesn't work properly, I think it's a good idea to make another one, and this is how I did it. I drew round the fitting, then I estimated by eye the position of the middle hole, which is offset like this. Then I punched out the holes using a hole punch. The holes weren't big enough, so using my Proxon motor tool, fitted with a grinder, I enlarged the holes. I went halfway through from one side, then I turned the gasket over and continued on the other side. By doing it that way, I found that the holes were much cleaner. If I went all the way through from one side, the hole was a bit raggy on the other side. In this clip, I'm using the grinder on the other side, and after I'd done that, as you can see, I got a very neat gasket that was a perfect fit and very clean. I'm not going to fit this gasket straight away. All I'm going to use is a modern equivalent of Boss White jointing compound and see whether it seals. I'm sure it will. Time to sit back and relax because it's painting time. This morning I got a comment from a viewer. The comment said, Yeah, your painting's not your strong suit. This is not a term I've heard before, but I do get the message. I can't be good at everything. On screen at the moment is an example of my painting which is not my strong suit, but like everything else that I show in these videos, it's the best I can do. I never wanted to be a painter anyway. 
Don't forget that I'm only a musician, composer, recording engineer and computer engineer. Oh yes, and I almost forgot a videographer too. Here you see me painting the check valve with a paintbrush. This is LMS Crimson Lake Paint by Phoenix Precision Paints. The start of October 2020 has not been good. I don't mean the world pandemic situation, that's not good anyway. At this moment in time, the videos are three months ahead on Patreon, and even though it really takes some doing, I try and make a video to a good standard every day. And recently, I've been putting a video on YouTube every day. Not a new video, just a video that is three months behind the ones on Patreon. Normally, each day I would get around 30,000 views of the 1500 plus videos that are up on YouTube. But on the 2nd of October, and indeed today, Saturday the 3rd of October, these views plummeted in AdSense. And the small amount I get from the advertising on the videos has also plummeted in line with the video views. So I don't know what's going on, I've sent a message to Google and one to YouTube, but no reply as yet. My content is fine, I'm not breaking any guidelines and nothing's changed. Just suddenly, inexplicably, everything dropped. And if this situation does not rectify itself in a couple of days, then I will have to stop making the videos public on YouTube. This will not affect my Patreon supporters in any way. My patrons will still receive a new video almost every day. I'm sure in the fullness of time I'll find out what's gone wrong with YouTube. And that's about it for this video. I'd just like to say as always, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.